Domo is a cloud-native data experience platform that puts data to work for everyone. We integrate, manage, and make data actionable by putting it in the hands of an organization's employees, customers, and partners through self-service dashboards and apps that connect to business process workflows so everyone can drive informed outcomes in the moment where work gets done. For today's demo, let's imagine that we are an analyst preparing for a meeting of the G20 where one of the subtopics will be about reducing poverty. We need to quickly ingest data from numerous sources, combine data in an easy and intuitive manner, and glean some insight from the data so we can work towards our goal of reducing poverty. Our first step is in collecting some data to analyze. Now for this exercise, we know that the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, or the OECD, has some files in their data explorer that we can download. We are going to download this first file and upload it to Domo. We're starting in the data warehouse where we can see all the clouds that we can connect to, as well as all the data and sources of data inside of the Domo cloud. We have a shortcut directly to a file upload here, which we'll use. We drag in our file and go through the upload process. The Domo platform detects all the data types, but gives us the option to change the types if we want to override them. Continuing, name the data set and choose where this will live, either in the Domo cloud or in another cloud that we have connected to, such as Snowflake. More on that later. For now, we want this to live inside of the Domo cloud. Once we have our data uploaded, we can view this data set, view attributes about the data in the data profiler. Our data profiler runs some automated tests on the data and will point out where we have some columns that are blank or constant. You can also get information on outliers, as well as see distribution information on the data. We can also click on View Statistics by Column and see distribution information, as well as the interactions between columns. So here we have information on which locations have the highest aggregated values, and we can do this for other columns also. Even though that was really easy to upload data into Domo as an Excel file, it is a manual process that we want to automate. When bringing in data, we prefer to use one of our built-in connectors in Domo's extensive connector library. Using these connectors, we can easily have our data ingestion automated on a set schedule or as the result of some triggered event. In our case here, grabbing data from the OECD, we notice that the OECD is in the middle of a transition in their backend API technology, and we wrote a quick script using Domo's native Jupyter integration to grab all of the OECD files we deemed relevant. So the next step after we ingest data into Domo is to combine some of our data sets together. Let's take this file we just uploaded into the Domo cloud and join it with another data set. To do this, we use our Magic ETL tool, which is a graphical tool to join and manipulate data. Here in Magic, we have a blank canvas to conduct our transform. We have functions built in to modify columns, perform text operations, combine and aggregate data, as well as pivot, unpivot data, and others. We even have support for SQL style functions and R or Python scripts in our data flow. In this case, we have the poverty data we have, and we want to append on some other historical poverty data we have uploaded. We select our two input data sets, append them, and specify an output where our new data will live. Here we have our Magic ETL data flow we just created. We can see the schedule that this will run on. It can be any set schedule or a trigger of events. In this case, we'll only run our data flow when both input data sets update. We can also see the input and output data sets, as well as the where this fits into the lineage, so we can see up and downstream implications of this data. Here we can see all data sets that are affected by the CTL job, as well as any cards that are powered by downstream data sets and any alerts that are downstream as well. Now that I have this data set, I can create KPIs and calculated metrics with Domo's analyzer and beast mode functionalities. I can also certify just those KPIs or certify the entire data set, either at a departmental level, such as a certified for use in marketing, or certified for the whole company. Here I'm able to request a certification and choose which certification process I want to submit for. I follow the process that has been set up for my organization. Now my data set is certified. Next, we want to create some KPIs on that data set. Here we have our beast mode editor. In this case, we want to classify the poverty rates as low, medium, or high. We create a calculated field, enter our formula, and save. I can again certify this attribute on the dataset, 
and is usable within my organization. We also have the ability to have live queries into data in other cloud environments using Domo's Cloud Amplifier. Cloud Amplifier allows native integration with Amazon Redshift, Databricks, Dremio, Google BigQuery, or Snowflake Cloud. In this case, we will assume the World Bank has given us access to their Snowflake instance. We'll be able to create content on top of it. We can also bring data back from our environment into the World Bank Snowflake instance as part of our data sharing agreement. Whenever we have a data set that we ingest or ETL we complete, we can write that data into another cloud provider. The first thing we want to do is create some simple visualizations in our Domo instance before we get to the more complex analysis. Here we are in our analyzer, ready to build a card. Here we can see the poverty data by year, and we can see that most of the countries do not have data entered for 2022, and the latest year is 2021. We'll limit our dashboard showing the latest data to be 2021 in this case. Now that we have a card, we want to create a dashboard. Here we create a dashboard by dragging the card we just created up to our page. We can add more content that is already created, and we have a simple dashboard. We can add all sorts of content such as cards and visualizations to controls for variables and filters. We also can add Domo bricks, which are widgets that run custom code. We can create our own or download one from the Domo App Store and in just a few clicks connect it to our datasets. We'll add one of these to our dashboard and ask it about poverty levels to let us know where to start looking to prepare for the summit. This particular brick connects to ChatGPT using Domo's AI service layer, one of two components of Domo AI. Domo AI model management allows for the development, training, and refactoring of AI models, whether hosted by Domo or by a third party. Domo AI Service Layer provides specific and tuned internal services powered by Domo AI models. Domo provides default models, but allows the flexibility to change which model is being used for each service based on customer policy and needs. The current architecture allows users to connect to Amazon Bedrock, Databricks, and OpenAI. Our default right now is to connect to ChatGPT, but as we'll see in our later section, a fully Domo hosted LLM is coming shortly. We ask this brick about our data and find that elderly poverty in Korea and Estonia is a particular interest for us to look into. To do so, we create an app using Domo's App Studio. App Studio brings together everything people love about dashboards and integrates design, interactivity, action, and distribution into a single engaging app experience. App Studio's low code interface helps you modernize your dashboards for a workforce that demands consumer grade experiences and seamlessly connected business processes and tools. We can use App Studio to organize our individual dashboards into a single navigation and use themes to customize the look and feel to match our organization's brand. In our app, we have different tabs at the top to take different views of our data. We start with a map of the world and are able to cycle through child, working age, and elderly poverty statistics. The first thing to note is the lack of data for most countries. This is due to this being an OECD survey, and not all countries are OECD countries. Next, we look at elderly poverty in countries around the world to see exactly where Estonia and Korea rank. As our AI response indicated, these two countries have much higher rates of elderly poverty. As indicated in the cards, OECD targets for 84% of the elderly to live above the poverty line, and both countries are below that. Next, we take a look at some predictions on the poverty rate in the future. These predictions come from our AutoML functionality in our Magic ETL tool that we saw earlier. Adding a predictive forecast to our app was as easy as identifying the variable we want to predict, entering in the confidence interval we want to display, and how far in the future we want to forecast. Other automated data science and machine learning functions are available for users to choose from as well. Back at our predictive model, we see the elderly poverty rates for both Korea and Estonia are predicted to rise in the future. This is taking into account a number of factors, such as social spending, fertility rates, and percentage of working age population. Next, we take a look at one area that may be helpful for Korea in the future, and that is social spending. We see that Korea has lagged behind the rest of the OECD nations in terms of social spending for the elderly. It has been increasing spend recently, and that is actually correlated with a slight decrease in elderly poverty as well. This is a topic we want to pursue at the G20, Nations Policies on Social Spending for the Elderly, 
as it may be a way for Korea to continue to bring down their elderly poverty rates. Next, we want to look at some AI-generated narratives. For this use case, we have another brick we deployed to our Poverty app, which provides a narrative based on our user persona. We again have an integration with OpenAI and ChatGPT. This operates through a three-step process. First, we generate user questions based on the data and persona of the person viewing the dashboard. Second, we use those questions and an integration with the OpenAI code interpreter to generate code to get an answer to the question. And third, the LLM writes a narrative. From there, we output that narrative to our dashboard, and the question will vary each time we refresh the page. These narratives are based on a data set uploaded into ChatGPT. Now we want to talk about sharing our findings. One way we can do that with Domo is by using our Office plugins. We open up Excel and have connected to our Domo instance. The connection we have in Excel goes both ways. In addition to bring data from Domo to Excel, we can import a data set from Excel back into Domo, illuminating the dark data in an organization that lives on people's laptops. For instance, here we have a model which brings in the relevant elderly poverty data for Korea and Estonia along with our predictive model. In this case, we have updated the parameters of our predictive model for Estonia and wish to update this spreadsheet. We simply hit refresh and my spreadsheet updates with the latest data. We also offer security in the way of locking a spreadsheet so that the data can be controlled so it isn't accidentally forwarded out of an organization. Domo has a similar PowerPoint plugin, updating dozens of slides instantly with the latest visualizations powered by your Domo datasets. Here we are again looking at our severity of poverty compared to other OECD countries' dashboard. We feel that this is important, and in working with some of our counterparts, we have multiple ways to share this data with them. The first is embedding the data using Domo Everywhere. This allows us to embed this dashboard in any kind of application. In this case, we've embedded it in this blog post on our website. Our dashboard embeds seamlessly into the content we've created. This can be embedded into any proprietary application, either publicly or privately, requiring authentication, which then integrates data permissions into the embedded content. We can also view this dashboard as a slideshow, export it to PowerPoint or PDF, or even publish the slides to be viewable publicly. We also can schedule this report to be distributed to a list of users on our set schedule, either within our organization or outside of it. If we're sending a report to a list of internal users, each of them will receive a report that confirms to the personalized data permissions that exist on that report. We can also set up alerts to notify us of changes in the data. These alerts can be set up to alert a user via email, text, or mobile app. We can also attach actions to these alerts. If we want to send a webhook into Slack or Teams to alert a channel of something happening in the data, we do so here. We also can start a Domo workflow, which is a business process automation tool to integrate with another system and take action. Perhaps we automate the process of allocating aid workers dependent on some trigger in a dataset. Finally, we can schedule this report to be sent to users based on a trigger in the data. Domo makes finding content easy. Searching for OECD brings up all sorts of results, cards, dashboards, datasets, and data flows. We can search for tagged or even certified content so that we know the content is accurate. We also allow users to see what content may be popular among their colleagues. Domo also allows users to access metadata datasets called Domostats that make governance tasks easier for admins. Users can take advantage of out-of-the-box reporting, such as this card load times dashboard that will monitor card and dataset performance as well as quickly create apps such as this analytics catalog where I can sort through and see which pages are the most popular and who is viewing those pages. So now we've used Domo to ingest data and analyze it, both manually as an analyst and guided by AI. We've uncovered more topics to explore, such as increasing social spending on the elderly in Korea, as well as declining fertility rates in an aging population. We've been able to share this information with our colleagues all around the world, embedded in blog posts using Domo Everywhere, as well as creating scheduled reports and alerts to prepare the principles for the summit. We have many features coming up on our roadmap we're excited about, including semantic models and more AI integrations. One of these capabilities is Domo AI Chat. 
Domo AI Chat will allow users to have a comprehensive conversation with and exploration of their data. When asking a question, a user will be shown past questions, autocomplete, and other contextual clues. Going beyond simple natural language query, Domo AI will suggest next best actions, whether that be generating a new visualization, setting an alert, calling an AI model, or other relevant tasks. In this way, you're not simply asking a question, but having a true conversation that allows you to explore your data in ways not possible before. Domo AI Chat will also be aware of the context within Domo as users navigating among dashboards and apps inside of Domo. When a user is on a marketing spend dashboard, the chat will be aware of what data and filters are present as it guides your conversation. App Studio will also add the ability to explicitly call AI models from a card or other app component, including universal models such as forecasting, sentiment analytics, outlier analysis, and more. Another capability that's already available to customers is workflows. Domo Workflows is a low-code automation tool that enables users to quickly build streamlined, data-driven processes that scale. Whether you're calling external systems or using Domo services, you can orchestrate and automate an entire end-to-end -end process in a workflow. The Workflow Designer is a visual canvas for constructing and mapping out your process. A workflow can be initiated by a variety of triggers, including data changes, scheduled-based events, API calls, and more. Users can order each step of their process by laying out shapes on the canvas that represent different activities, including user tasks, decision points, and automated functions. You control and configure the business logic in each step. One of the strengths of Domo Workflows is its capacity to integrate with systems beyond Domo's core products. It can also integrate with virtually any third-party data source or API. Users can incorporate automated functions as steps in their workflows, from a global library that contains pre-built services for both internal and external integrations. They can also write and implement their own customized functions. This versatility ensures users can incorporate the relevant data and logic they need from different systems into their workflow. A manual task can be used when a human touch point is needed to satisfy a step. At runtime, the workflow will generate the manual task in a queue. Queues organize manual tasks into categories and control who can access them. Users can claim, assign, update, or submit tasks. The corresponding workflow will recognize when a task is complete and move on to the next activity. Any workflow execution can be visually tracked, so users know exactly what happened in any instance a workflow has initiated. Domo customers from diverse sectors and markets have successfully implemented workflows for all types of use cases and unique business needs. This adaptability ensures users can leverage Domo workflows to convert their data insights into actionable and efficient automated processes.